Ow, wow, wow. Welcome to a new episode of Nate's MMA Corner. I am Nate, and if you watch my show, you're in my corner. Today's episode is a pre-fight show for UFC 166, Cain Velasquez versus Junior Dos Santos for the UFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Yeah, this is going to be a star-studded card from top to bottom, even on the prelims. You got Nate Marquardt and Hector Lombard, and you got uh, you got Tony Ferguson, Mike Rio on the Facebook prelims. Go Tony Ferguson, and well, I like Mike Rio too. Met him, nice guy. Okay, so let's get started on the main card for this star-studded pay-per-view. Get my pre-fight rundown. Okay, so the main event is for the UFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Cain Velasquez versus Junior Dos Santos. For the first time ever on my pre-fight show, I got this fight at a 50-50. I cannot pick a winner. But, I will say that I want Junior Dos Santos to win. So, I'll give him a nudge there. But, in terms of the reality of the situation, I, I can't sit here and say, well, Junior has it made and you know, he's going to win, or there's a 51% chance he's going to win, and 49% that Kane's going to win. No, i I, I got to go with 50-50, because on one hand you got Kane Velasquez, who is really good at what he does, but he's really predictable. He loves to change levels, act like he's going to stand and bang with you when he's going to shoot for a takedown, go for a single leg, a double leg, it don't matter. Then, when you are so used to him going for the takedowns, he's going to stand and bang with you. Now, Junior should have realized this on the second match. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't, I don't know. But he, he fell for the tricks. I think he did know. I think he did know. And I think Junior is going to be better prepared this time. But the thing about Junior is he loves to just box and I wish he would grapple more he's I think the key for Junior is to grapple more to throw Kane's game plan off go for takedowns on Kane try to submit Kane I mean they're both black belts in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Kane's a division one wrestler now Junior Dos Santos has underrated wrestling He's able, he was able to deal with Shane Carwin when he fought him, and he was training for Brock Lesnar, and I think he would have beat Brock Lesnar had they fought. Now, striking-wise, I think Junior is slightly better still than Cain Velasquez on the stand-up. I mean, that second fight they had with Junior and Cain, it... Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll kind of buy into the story that Junior was, was worn out. He overtrained. You know, it, it did seem like something was off, and I think that Junior's gonna be in better shape for this fight. But I, I think this fight comes down to: Is Junior gonna fight smart, or just try to land that one punch? Because if he tries to land that one punch, that one overhand right, then. It's going to be a long night for Junior trying to do that, and he may land it, he may not, and it could turn into another decision loss for Junior. Now, if Junior fights smart, then he will take Kane down, wear him out, ground and pound, land some good shots, use that jab. When they're in the clinching, land a good, solid uppercut and just really make it a long night for Kane. So it's going to come down to, I think, Junior more than anything else. If Junior wants this or he doesn't want it or he's going to fight smart or not fight smart, that will determine whether or not Kane wins. That will determine whether Junior wins. Because Kane's going to go in and do the same thing. I mean, we all know it. He even pretty much admitted to it on TV that he's going to change levels make him think he's going to stand and bang, go for a takedown when he's ready to stand and bang, go for the takedown or not go for it, stand and bang, and just try to throw throw off Junior 
and it's just a matter of will Junior fall for it. So I got this fight 50-50, but I hope Junior wins. Go Junior Sagano. Yeah. You're my buddy. You're my pal. Love you, man. Great guy. One of the nicest fighters I've ever met. And, uh, yeah, then in the, also in the heavyweight division, we have Daniel Cormier versus Roy Nelson. This fight, I think Roy Nelson, you know, he has better jiu-jitsu than Daniel Cormier, but Daniel Cormier has solid enough jiu-jitsu, and he has great wrestling. He's also a Division One wrestler, like Kane, and they, he trains with Kane. They're both from... Daniel and Kane are from AKA, and yeah, I think you know, you know, this is one of those matches where I'm going to root for Roy Nelson, but I think Daniel Cormier is going to win. I think Daniel Cormier is probably going to win by unanimous decision here, because Roy Nelson's hard to finish. It's hard. To, it's going to be hard to knock him out. Sure, Daniel could wrestle him, but Roy, Roy will be moving around on the ground a lot, going for submissions. He's a great jujitsu guy. Daniel will be defending the submissions in top position, thus get a unanimous decision win. But I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong because I'm a big Roy Nelson fan. So hopefully I'm wrong on that. Hopefully Roy Nelson comes up with upset and knocks out Daniel Cormier. I think that's the best chance that Roy, Roy Nelson has. I mean, he could wear out Daniel in the later and say midway into round three, or some, somewhere in round three, Roy could submit Daniel Cormier, I think. Because Daniel, his gas tank will have to wear down for a bit before Roy could submit him or knock him out. But I, I think that if Roy's going to finish him, it's going to be in the third round, and, or most likely Daniel just win by unanimous decision. So there you have it on that one. Now... Also on the main card, we got in the lightweight division, Gilbert El Nino Melendez versus Diego Sanchez. Gilbert Melendez, Diego Sanchez, they're both they're they're both very much alike. You know, they've trained together in the past. They're both uh, very fast. They both have good grappling skills. They're both experienced veterans in the sport. I just think that Gilbert Melendez is the slightly better version. He is. Almost as good as Diego in jiu-jitsu, but then he really makes it up makes up for it in, in his boxing. I think with Gilbert Melendez, Gilbert Melendez really knows how to fight smart, technical. I'm a big Gilbert Melendez fan. Gil Gilbert Melendez, Diego Sanchez. I feel like you know he won a decision over Martin Kantman, and he won a decision over Takanori Gomi, and I feel like those two matches. Should have went the other way. I think just Diego got super lucky on the on the scorecards or decisions, whatever. However the judges saw it, I don't know. But, I mean, I know with the Martin Kantman fight, there was a lot of proof that Martin Kantman uh, statistically did more and should have won that fight. Takanori Gomi fight, that was by split decision. I You know, he got lucky there. Gilbert Melendez, though. I mean, he's coming off a loss split decision to Ben Henderson. Now, Gilbert Melendez, you know, he's tore through everyone in strike force. He he is a former strike force lightweight champion. He's 21 and 3. And yeah, I feel like Diego Sanchez should at least be 22 and 7. So, and Gilbert Melendez, I just think, is probably going to win by unanimous decision against Diego Sanchez. I think it's going to go back and forth. There's going to be back and forth on grappling, gra back and forth on stand-up. But at the end of the day, Gilbert Melendez, while the slight edge, he'll land more strikes. He'll get one or two more takedowns in each round. And it's going to be hard for Melendez to submit him. But Gilbert will be good enough to get at least top position using his wrestling. And score points. To score points, it'll be a points matchup. And thus, Gilbert Melendez will win by unanimous decision. Then, and also in the heavyweight division, we have 
Gabriel Gonzaga versus Sean Jordan. You know, this fight, I, I'll go, hmm. On one hand, you got Sean Jordan, who, he's, oh, he's okay overall. And then you got Gabriel Gonzaga, who's a fourth degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I feel like, hmm. Man, you know what? I guess I'll go with Sean Jordan on this because he's in Texas. He's a Texan. He's a bit younger. He has better record overall. And he's training with Greg Jackson. Sean Jordan will be smart enough to stay out of the grappling game of Gabriel Gonzaga, I think. Uh, and thus, Gabriel Gonzaga will lose by knockout. Yeah, I'll say Sean Jordan wins by knockout. Somewhere in the match. First or second round, most likely. Yeah, I'll go with Sean Jordan. I mean, this this is, this is one's a coin toss, because you got Gabriel Gonzaga, who recently has been real smart about using his grappling, know his strengths, know his weaknesses. Yeah, he's come off a, a win over uh, Dave Herman by KO in the round in first round. But Sean Jordan, he's this... He's overall smart. I mean, I'm a, yeah, I'm kind of sort of a Sean Jordan fan. I, I think this will be a good win for Sean Jordan. It'll get him back up on the map. So I'll say Sean Jordan. Yeah, Sean Jordan's come off a uh, win over Pat Berry by TKO. And I just think that Sean Jordan will use heavy hands and keep the distance. Then in the flyweight division, to kick off the main card, we have John Dodson versus... Uh, Daryl Montague. John Dodson is well-rounded. Daryl Montague is a wrestler. I, I'll go with uh, John Dodson on this one because John Dodson's more well-rounded. He's fought the tougher comp competition and, and learned from it. And he's come off a, a, a decision loss to Demetrius Johnson and he wants to get back in title contention and he's hungry and he's aggressive. And Daryl Montague will just be going for takedowns. And Daryl Montague, his losses have both, uh, both he's 13-2, and two, but and both of his losses have been by uh, finish. He's, yeah, he's been finished in both of his losses. So John Dodson, I think, he just, he has that knockout power. And I can picture Don, John Dodson actually knocking out Daryl Montague. Well, either knockout in the first, second round, due to punches, or unanimous decision win for John Dodson. So it'll get John Dodson back in title talks. So that, there you have it for the main card of UFC 166. And some honorable mentions for the prelims. We got uh, Tony Ferguson versus Mike Rio, Sarah Kaufman versus Jessica I, and Jeremy Larson versus Andre Feely. Yeah, uh, Jeremy Larson Fight as a featherweight. Sarah Kaufman fights a women's bantamweight, obviously, and Tony Ferguson. Go Tony El Kakui in the lightweight division. Big fan of both Mike Rio and Tony Ferguson there. So there you have it. Stay tuned in the next few days for my post-fight show for UFC 166. And hopefully Junior will have learned from his mistakes and win by unanimous... Win by, anyway, unanimous decision, knockout, submission, I don't care. Just, just find a way to win, Junior. And until then, see ya.